Hi, I'm Bob Shrupp, physical therapist. And I'm Brad Heidek, physical therapist. And together we are the most famous physical therapists on the internet, Brad. Well, in our opinion, of course, Bob. In our opinion. Today, Brad, we're going to talk about three secrets for running with low back pain. And this is something near and dear to you, isn't it? Yes, it is. And uh, for people 40 and over, low back pain is yeah. pretty common. I know a lot of people that have had to stop running because of back pain. Right. And people 40 and over, a great number of people like to run for a form of right. fitness. So if you're 40 and over, please subscribe to us because we're going to provide you videos on stay healthy, pain-free, and fit. Well, and, and keep on running. Yep. Yeah. All right, Brad, what are we doing here? Low back pain. Personally, I've dealt with low back pain for a number of years. If you want to see some details on my low back pain, you can link. Nancy's is going to put it up here. Uh, I've got spondylolith. Spondylolisthesis. That's a mouthful. Um, we got x-rays on my back, and you'll see clearly that when uh, you see the x-rays, this person needs to run. One ball shifted forward on another ball. Right. Very painful. Yep. Uh, and I used to run five miles was my normal running distance uh, years okay. ago, and about three or four years ago, back pain started to become chronic, dropped off to almost no running, and within the last year of following these steps, I'm up to three and a half miles without back pain, and I'm considering going up to five miles my next step. So, the three secrets. Number one, core strengthening. You need to get that core tight because the core is like that back belt that yeah. God gave us to tighten up around that back and support it with the impact. It acts like a splint almost. Right. Because yeah. when you run, the impact of each yeah. step with a little bit of force that that back and those muscles, those muscles will take up that force if they're tight and strong. Right. So, so core strengthening, if you link up, Nancy's going to put it on there. i got three videos with the exercises that I do right now five days a week. These are with an exercise physio ball. Right. Yeah. The big exercise ball. Cheap yeah. and very effective. And he's got some great ones to do, and Nancy will put up some of those links right now. Right, Nancy? Boom, boom, boom. <laughs> okay. All right. Good job, right. Nancy. Uh, the next thing is, and these aren't in order, uh, but number two is progressive distance. I started out walking one I mile. Say, I, I would start walking. You know, and one thing I found out was very interesting. I could walk a three-fourths of a mile. By the time I got to that three-quarter mile mark, where I marked it on the road, I could see my mailbox. I started getting low back pain. and started going down my leg a little bit. And to this day, that's still kind of like that. But I started to run. And I can run three and a half miles now with no back pain or leg pain. So there's a difference between walking and running with me. Yeah, there is. But there's one thing I changed and added my method or style of running. Now I do four foot running where I used to do the heel toe strike. And every time that heel comes down when you run like that, you get that impact. And it's like you're putting the brakes on. Exactly. And you're, it's increasing the amount of stress that's going up through your body. Yeah. The four foot, and, and Brad's going to recommend this book. The forefoot acts as a shock absorber. Right. It's like, right. Uh, and what he talks about is how a lot of animals run that way. Right. So, you know, if you want to do forefoot running and change your style, it's not easy. I've been working on it for a few months now with this, but it's working. It's, uh, this is by uh, Nicholas Romanov. He's got a PhD. I think it's written fairly well. He's kind of long wordy. Yeah, yeah, it could have been a lot sm shorter. Yeah. I, I mean, he, he he lengthened it out, but uh, he's a PhD. They like the right. And, and I, I have to be honest, I did the same thing. I converted to this, and I I've had much less difficulties with. It. I'm, I'm talking about any injuries going all the way from the foot all the way up to right. the back. I mean, yeah. it's just it, it decreases your stress levels. And I, uh, I the other thing I can do, I can actually use running shoes longer. Believe it or not. Oh, sure. Yeah, they just they, they seem to last longer. Right. I I'd say one warning, Brad, and we just talked about this. This pose method does increase the amount of stress on your calves mm -hmm. and, uh, and your tendons. Right. So, I mean, you gotta, you're going to find out your calves may get sore when you, when you start using this method. Mm -hmm. And that's fine because that's taking the stress instead of all the other right. the joints. And, and if you go progressively, right, you'll, you'll avoid that. Right. So, good, good book, good method. Um, yeah, I would highly recommend if you're a runner all to, to use that. And these are good three secrets, brother. Yeah, and they're field tested by yours truly, and uh, boy, I'm, I'm sold on it. So uh, take your time. Of, this is going to take probably about four to six months to get through all this. You need your core strength, and I did over the winter time for three months, and I still do. But you got it. It takes a while to yeah, tighten your core. All right, get out there and do it. Be careful.